Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a brand new video here on my channel and we're back on the set of course of Competizione and I'm actually recording now and making this video that I was talking about on for days and days I think uh, it's actually the performance comparison video between the GT4 cars from the newly announced and newly released uh, GT4 DLC on a set of course of Competizione for anyone wondering I really, really wanted to try this out, but before I actually get into the lap times, I just want to say that the performance differs from car to car and from diver to diver, from track to track as well. For example, I remember uh, Ermin actually made a video of, like that on Brands Hats, and based on his driving style, the McLaren 570S was the fastest car, but for me, probably around Brands Hats, another car would be my best because uh, I have a completely different driving style so of course don't take this video as uh, you know the format of which car is the fastest one I would just uh, rather suggest you to try out this by yourself and see for yourself uh, which car really suits your style more and you are the faster with a car with a car uh, but in my opinion if somebody drives similarly to me then probably this is the guide for you and especially if you're really having a, a race around Kialami and you have the same driving style as me then this is the video that you were probably really looking forward to but still in my opinion it's a fairly mm, distant comparison uh, but yeah I've done around four to five laps with its car and that was the result so let's head into the first car guys so the first car is the Alpine A110 and this car particularly was the slowest one uh, in my opinion it was also the first car I would try out and for some weird reason I just couldn't really get into grips with this car it's um, I don't know what really was it about this car I just never really got into grips with it uh, of course I would like to give it another shot but um, as I told you I've done around four to five laps with this car of course there's uh, some time hidden in this car uh, that could probably get it down to the low 153s I feel like the gap is way too huge to believe that this car is so slow I just I just can't really agree that this car is so slow uh, so I would try and do more laps with this car but I feel like I've done enough for this day and that was the best I could extract from this car on this certain lap so let's listen to the Alpine engine for a bit and uh, check out the rest of the lap We actually lost a lot of time and also into the previous corners I feel like there is a lot a lot of lost time uh, with this car and of course we could have found much more time but uh, so yeah don't really take this car as the slowest car of this uh, whole group it's down to the slowest cars but it's not so much slower I feel like I could have said a, a 153.3 with this car but at the end of the day it was a 153.6 and that was for it for the Alpine and next car was the Aston Martin V8 Vantage GT4 and we've actually I've actually got into grips with this car fairly nicely I felt like it was a very strong car I could actually boost the car quite a lot and uh, it was quite fun it was quite fun and we managed to get down to the 152s with this car which uh, was the first time we would have got down to the 152s after the disappointing run with the Alpine seeing that I could actually set a 152 on a, on a different car it really made me understand how how much important the importance of this video because you might be losing a lot of time purely because a car doesn't suit your driving style so don't always say oh, I'm slow I'm not so fast or any of those things I feel like you need to find the car that suits your driving style the most and just drive with this car almost all the time I know it takes out it takes away some of the fun that the game has for you like the main like I have uh, if I play the game and I'm on I'm racing online I love trying out different cars and trying to beat 
and win races or get some good races with different cars but if you're really looking to find some true performance just find the car that suits your driving style and stick with it for a, a while and pretty much improve daily on this car build a setup on this car and just yeah just build your whole driving style around this car and that's what real drivers do as well so yeah, if you really want to improve just like a real driving driver does then do that well as you can see uh, there was still some time hidden in this uh, car as you can see probably a little bit early on the throttle a little bit later on the brakes could have been much better of course uh, I can't deny that but still it was a fairly distant lap as you can see already came from the final corner around the uh, two to three tenths there now at the end of the day a 152.6 and it was quite a very good lap if you ask me and then next up was the Audi R8 LMS uh, GT4 car this was a little bit of a mixed feelings car for some weird reason I was expecting this car to feel very well but it really didn't as you can see that turn one lost some time probably around a tenth or so there lost on that uh, first corner so this car could have reached the 152s but it was uh, fairly hard to reach that uh, in like four to five laps as you can see I did more laps with this car because uh, I set a 153.2 but I ran a little bit wide and the lap wasn't validated so I was standing there with a 153.6 which I knew wasn't the real speed of the car but it, it, it was just that little bit like the Alpine it had that weird feeling and the entry of the corners that I couldn't actually as if it didn't have enough downfalls and uh, mid corner speed something like very weird but as you can see already down to the 152s we could have set a 152 with this car but unfortunately uh, I've made a few mistakes uh, throughout the lap that didn't allow me to get that 152 there as you can see predicted there 152.8 so fairly strong car even though it didn't feel very well it could actually produce a very good lap but unfortunately there was a slight mistake onto the next corner this right hander right there as you can see very early on the brakes such a huge mistake by me and I feel so sorry about the Audi because it could have easily been down to the 152 so yeah uh, take this for granted like the, the Audi can set 152s around Kiyolami fairly easily so it's a very good car but it just didn't really feel good while driving it so I wouldn't really recommend it in my opinion if you have the same driving style as me I would choose the Aston Martin over the Audi it just felt far more natural Whereas this Audi just felt a little bit more robotic in my opinion. And then we went to the big boys. The BMW M4. And remember how much I ignored this car. And I said I wouldn't actually try it. Well, I was so wrong. Because so far from the cars that we've tried. Um, this was the best feeling one. This, has the, this had the better feeling. And it felt like I could do anything with this car. It just somehow felt like this car was built for me so I had a very good feeling with this car I knew when to accelerate into the braking zones it was a monster like I could brake very late and there was no lockups or anything as you can see down uh, on the right corner uh, of the screen you can see my assist traction control was always on one and ABS either on one or two depends on the car and as you can see there we have actually we actually set a 152.7 which was invalidated so I was like we need to go on the set at 152 because this car is capable of a 152 and this car was um, quite comfortable with uh, the curbs like riding over the curbs and it also has a fairly nice uh, engine sound so I'm gonna let you enjoy it for just a little bit because uh, the, this lap is actually quite good and it needs to be commentated over Phenomenal exit through there that gave us a lot of time and over the curb there very good exit and now onto the final corner this left hander and we actually didn't really get such a good exit I feel like I could have done just a little bit better on the throttle and that would allow us to get a 152.5 if I'm not mistaken so yeah 152.5 very good lap with a BMW that I pretty much ignored and next up we had the Chevrolet Camaro GT4 and this car 
had the almost same feeling as the BMW, but the only difference was that it was so much better over the curbs. And I know Game and Master also said that on his video about this car. You can see I just go over the curbs and I feel like nothing can stop me. It's a, it's as if I'm like uh, driving a Jeep or something. So this car is really the definition of a monster on the track. So. GT4 car, Chevrolet Camaro, really like this car and I would, I would be probably choosing it on some online races. It felt like a real monster out there on the track and as you can see very late on the brakes as well. It really suited my driving style somehow whereas uh, Ermin, well I did uh, like the more lightweight cars like the KDM, the McLaren. I really like these cars, these uh, heavy cars were very good for me. But also I really like the Aston Martin which is not such a heavy car, it's like a normal car. And remember we said a 156 with the Aston Martin which is slightly slower than the BMW and also the Camaro. You will see very soon that the Chevrolet Camaro actually set an almost identical lap to the BMW. So that shows how similar these two cars are in reality. So I'm not lying, these cars are very similar but I feel like the Camaro, even though I feel like it's set uh, some thousands off there in terms of uh, pace as you can see that exit right there is what costed probably the Camaro winning there but look at how much curve I'm gonna be taking through there very easy on the curbs and on the exit slightly losing time I feel like this last two corners could have been much better and the exit through there wasn't ideal and that's why the Camaro couldn't actually beat the BMW bar in my opinion Chevrolet Camaro even though it's just a little bit slower than the BMW is actually a faster car and I could set a very good lap but moving on to my favorite car the Ginetta G55 and you know it might be my favorite car it might be my, the car that I love the most you know I have a special relationship with a Ginetta but can it also set the fastest lap as you can see from already uh, it already has beaten every single car a 152.3 for the Ginetta for the time being but I knew that I could set a 151 and that's why I stayed out with the Ginetta to try and set one more lap as you can see 152 dead and I knew that I could set a 151 but I'm gonna let you enjoy for a little bit the Ginetta because I just love this car uh, if I'm honest with you guys good run through there and this car is actually feels like I'm driving a real-life car and it's probably one of the main reasons why I love this car so much it's just it's just my favorite GT4 car and probably favorite GT car in general but unfortunately as you can see right there didn't have the best effects to there I actually run wide and that did not help me uh, get that 151 that I was actually looking forward to get and uh, we actually lost around three to four tenths with that mistake but still we set a, a faster lap than the previous one but yeah, the Ginetta, if you have the same driving style as me, I feel like the Ginetta can really help you extract the most out of yourself and out of this car. It is a 152.1 at the end of the day. Uh, could have been much better. That's all I'm going to say for the Ginetta. It could have been a 151. But next car on the list, the KDM X-Bow, uh, x -Bow, A very, very weird car. And uh, similar to the McLaren, if you ask me. Uh, it's actually very light it has a phenomenal acceleration which is the the main thing about this car very good acceleration and very agile through the corner so if you're looking for a track with very tight corners uh, then this is probably the car to choose it has a very interesting um, handling mode I feel like the handling with this car is quite interesting it's not very hard but it's a, the extremely light weight that this car has doesn't let you to push it a lot through high speed corners and that's probably one of the reasons I couldn't really set a phenomenal lap with this car uh, it was uh, to the low 53s and that's as smart as I could produce out of it I didn't really personally didn't really like the engine sound I feel like um, it's a little bit weak but in terms of like appearance I feel like it's a fairly uh, extraordinary car to look at I feel like you know even, even if you don't win the race uh, 
the eyes of the spectators we really go down this car because it looks like it came from SpaceX or something, something like that. Slightly losing the back end to the penultimate corner and now to the final corner, second gear, trying to get a good exit, but there was something weird about this car uh, that I just couldn't understand when to really go onto the throttle. Probably traction control zero would have been better with this car, but now moving on to the hardest car, the Maserati Gran Turismo MC, the notoriously named hardest car in the game, which also has been labeled as the slowest car. And I don't understand why. Uh, you can call it hard, you can call it like it's not very agile, it's very hard under braking, it's unpredictable, you can say all these things about this car. But don't tell me it's the slowest car, because from what I've seen, and I haven't even done a lot of laps with this car, I could have improved even more, and I could have gone down to the 152s with this car. Yes, you've heard that right, down to the 152s with this car. Whereas uh, with the Alpine, I just couldn't get down to 152s. It was uh, going to be mid-153s for sure. But this car could actually help me push as much as I wanted. And I could go down to 152s. Uh, of course, I didn't make it on this lap. But it was fairly possible, I'm going to say. Um, this It has the same sort of style that the BMW and the Gran Turismo. Uh, not the Gran Turismo, the Chevrolet has. Um, but it's not as heavy. It's more agile. And it's more strong. It has that very strong feeling, as you can see, going very wide there. But we're going to be getting a fairly decent exit. We actually lost plenty of time through there. So that's where I think we lost plenty of time and lost out on the 152s. I feel like this car is capable of setting 152 highs. And I can highly support that. Because as you can see right there, look through this exit. How much time we're going to be gaining through there. And that's going to clearly drop down the 153.2s there and a very good exit through there take as much curve as you want this car can handle it despite me running slightly wide through the final corner now try and get the best possible exit and this car gives you that freedom that no other car can give you because the traction control is off and the ABS is off you are actually leading this car so a 153 dead could have been a 152 I'm telling you Moving on to the McLaren 570S uh, from the Gran Turismo, the Maserati felt amazingly and now we moved on to a car that some people say that it's their favorite car, for me it's the least favorite car and I honestly didn't want to touch this car ever again and you can understand that from the amount of laps I set on this car. I knew that I just couldn't extract anything from this car. This car just didn't switch my driving style. It felt horrendous and it was quite weird to see that because most of the times on racing games like the Gran Turismo games on GT3 and GT4 racing I mostly choose the McLaren cars like I like the McLaren cars in general even on Air Factor 2 I like this car I like this not this car the GT3 McLaren I actually really like it on Air Factor 2 but this GT4 McLaren Bro, that car was just horrendous for me. Like, for my driving style, I, I could never set a 152 with this car, and I know it. Whereas with the Maserati or even the Alpine, I feel like we could have done like a uh, mid 53. The Alpine and the McLaren are probably the worst cars from this category. Whereas with the Gran Turismo, the Maserati, it could have been a 152, I'm telling you. But this car just, just, just didn't feel right. I've actually set a few more laps after this, after this one, but I just couldn't do any better. And the most we could do was a 153.1, and it was the most I could do with this car. It just, just didn't. It's just that car just wasn't for me. And moving on to the Mercedes AMG GT4, uh, a very weird car. Didn't really enjoy driving it. It had uh, a similar feeling to the Audi, 
Um, and it's, it was pretty much the same as the Audi. It, uh, we, made, uh, we made it to the 152s with this car, whereas with the Audi we couldn't, but I've already told you the Audi could have easily made it to the 152s had I not made that mistake. So, of course, my driving wasn't perfect with every single car, but I can give you the overall feeling that I got from the few laps that I set with each and every single car. But this Mercedes actually felt quite decent. Um, of course, I would never choose it again. It, it's not really my style of car and same with the Audi but they can extract a very good lap time still I might not feel very well to with this cars but they can still set a very competitive lap um, of course I say this when the Ginetta with the Ginetta could have set a 152.1 so it's a little bit ironic to say that but in comparison to like the Alpine and the McLaren this feels much better and I could well and truly with a few more laps get some lap time out of this car even more and probably go to the mid 152s which I highly doubt but I'm just saying that with practice probably I could get a few more tens out of this car but still it made it to the 152s uh, not very good through this corner lost quite a lot of time so probably could have been even lower than the 152s but still fairly decent car it actually sounded very well It sounded very well and as you can see there a 153.2 couldn't make it to the 152s but still this car was actually quite decent uh, the Porsche the last car the Porsche 718 came in and fairly weird feelings about this car yet again I don't know what to say about this car it felt kind of weird it just didn't feel like a car that I would choose again of um, the BMW or the Chevrolet or of course the Geneta very weird handling very understeering as you can see there huge amount of oversteer completely lost it through there and lost around three tenths around there so bear in mind this car can set 152s yet again because we just lost three to two tenths there around this corner so we actually set a very low 153 there I feel like we set a 153.1 so without that mistake it could have been a 152 uh, high probably 152.8 or something like that so yeah this car actually felt very well and uh, I could actually choose it for some online races so it, it wasn't that bad let's just say that so yeah not so bad and a uh, fairly good engine sound as well That's pretty much the lap. Uh, besides uh, that mistake that we made at the start of the lap, it was a very good lap. Uh, and that exit wasn't very good. I feel like I broke a little bit too early. But still, we set a 153.1. And yeah, it could have been a 152 something with this car. So, very good lap with this car. And I felt like it was such a decent car. But as you can see, here are the overall standings with the Ginetta G55 setting on 152.1, capable for 151. Second, the BMW M4 with 152.5, same, almost identical with the Chevrolet Camaro down in third, yet again with a 152.5, but I still believe that the Chevrolet Camaro is faster than the BMW. Next up, we've got the Aston Martin with a 152.6, and the KDM x Bowl fairly strong with a 152.7, which I wasn't really expecting it, uh, because it filmed just like the McLaren, but it extracted a much better time. It was more agile, let's just say. Audi R8 LMS with a 153.0, could have been a 152. Unfortunately, my 152 lap with the Audi R8 was invalidated. Gran Turismo though, Maserati Gran Turismo and 153 dead yet again. And I feel like had I done one more lap with the Gran Turismo, it could have been just a little bit better. McLaren 570S, don't want to try this car out again, ever again. I'm not going to be trying this ever, ever, ever again. A 153.1, and that's the most this car can do. Paul's came on with a 153.1. 
Could have been a 152 yet again I'm saying this unfortunately we just couldn't extract any more speed out of this car but I feel like it could have been a 152 very easily with a Cayman had we not made that mistake. Mercedes AMG 153.2 but as I've already told you with this car I actually got invalidated a 152 time so it was something like a 152.7 but unfortunately that lap got invalidated. Then last but not least the Alpine A110 with a 153.6 I feel like fairly unlucky. But yeah, it's, it is what it is. I could have been like a 153.3 or something like that. But that was it for today, guys. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tell me down in the comments below if you want to see the same thing happening with the GT3s, despite me not liking them as much as the GT4s. But yeah, until the next video, guys, which I don't really know which game is going to be. I'll catch you later. Goodbye.